Hi everybody, I'm Ricky Richards and uh, today I brought you to the beautiful Buzzard Valley Lakes uh, to do a silverfish feature. Originally we were meant to go on the river but all the rivers are flooded and it's 50 mile an hour wind. So I brought you here today, we're going to try and catch some silverfish. I've had a little plum up and it's a bit weedy, found a clear spot. So we're going to fish a long pole and I've set a little feeder up to maybe chuck over the pole line as well. Right, here we go then guys. What I'm going to show you now is the baits I've brought for today, for a day's silver fishing. I've never fished this place before, um, so I've got a trusted mix that I'd use anywhere, and that's Lake and Canal Black. And they're both from the census range. Uh, what I've brought today with me is a, a pack of Joker, and this is going to try and get me some bites when I don't know a fishery. I'd, I'd be happy to take that anywhere and we've got a small hook pack of bloodworm. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our base mix. That's a bag of Canal Lake, um, Lake 3000. Next we're going to add the Census Canal Black. we we'll just add them 50-50. Then what I like to do, just to add some, some um, body to the, to the mix, is add a point of crumb. That's just a, a point up there, straight into the mix. Give that a mix round. Make sure all that's thoroughly mixed. What we're going to do now is add water, just bits at a time. Still a bit dry and we've added about a point and a half of water to that. By experience I know this mix takes about three, three points of water. Right so that's two points gone into that now. All I'm going to do is leave that, that ground bait to stand but before I do leave it to stand to so make sure I've got in uh, all the corners of the the, uh, the ground bait, make sure there's no dry stuff at the bottom. What we're going to do is tip it into a bigger bucket. Like I said, there's some ground bait come from the bottom, what's not got all the water. So just give that one more whisk. And we'll pop that out the way to stand, take the water on. Next what we're going to do is prepare our joker. So this joker here, I got this off um, Sam Waldsmith from Mill Tackle. There's half a kilo there and it costs around eight or nine pound for half a kilo joker. It's not expensive stuff and this, depending on how good a day you have, this can sometimes last you three sessions. Just uh, gets wrapped up in the newspaper, left on the garage floor and it looks after itself. 
I did go out last weekend and I used some of this so I've already leaned it up but this will come neat and all you literally have to do is get either normal molehill soil or if, you, if you've not got access to molehill soil just get a bag of Teddy Som uh, which is just clay so lime is just clay, that's all it is, just mud and all you're going to do is sprinkle probably 250 to 500 mil over your joke, depending on how much you've got, and just massage it in. And eventually, your joker will separate itself. Once your joker's separated and it's in uh, the paper ready to feed, we're just going to pop that to one side. Right, all we're going to go through now is how you prepare your, your blood worm for on the hook should come in a, lit a little um, piece of newspaper like that all we're going to do is take a small pinch out of the blood worm pop that in the water just give it a little swirl around the reason we're giving a little a little swirl around is that if there's any dead blood worm in there that should float to the top wrap that back up pop that to one side. The reason we don't put all your uh, blood worm into the water is because if for instance we're in 50 mile an hour wind today if that blows off your side tray and all your blood worm goes in you've got none left so we'll just put a small pinch in at a time. All we're going to do now is tip the access water off and just leave around 50 ml of water inside the three point tub and that's your blood worm ready to uh, go on the hook other baits we've got we've just got some red maggots I can kill these as we go along today or I can leave them live I've never fished here so I don't know if the, uh, how big the fish are so whether I need to kill the maggots or leave them alive we've got a bit of caster for putting through our ground bait and maybe drop one on the hook later on. Right and we've left our ground bait for about 20 minutes, half an hour and it's soaked on all that water. Now we can get the ground bait and if we squeeze it hard we can bind a ball with it but it's quite dry. As soon as that goes in the water it'll just explode. So we've added just over two points of water to it now. It's absorbed all that. What I want to do is introduce just enough water to get it to the right consistency. So by experience, this, this mix now should take approximately another pint of water. Just add the water again slowly. And that there feels bang on. So that's three pints of water, like I said at the start. And what I'm going to do now is make my initial feed and my top up balls my top up mix. So what I'm going to do now is get two buckets I want to introduce six balls at the start so all we're going to do is get six hand sized balls one two three four five six What I want to uh, do now is add the feed into the, the ground bait, what I want to introduce into the start. So all we're going to do is take our joker. Get a 250ml pot. I'm just going to measure out 200 mil of joker that goes into the mix and your joker can go to one side I want to introduce a small amount of maggots I don't because I want to be catching on blood worm today so I don't want to put too much maggot into the mix oh these are live maggots all I'm going to do is stun them 
the way I'm going to do is take a small palmful. There's about 50 to 60 maggots there, and just roll them round in our hands. As you can see, they're all stunned now, they're not moving. That enables us to make our balls a ground bait and the maggots aren't going to wriggle and break the balls up. Take a small handful of casters again. There's probably 60 to 70 casters there. They go into the mix. And that's our initial mix. All we're going to do now is mix it round. Ensuring all the bait is distributed evenly. You don't want no big clumps of joker, so just separate that. And that there is our um, initial feed. It's all separated nicely. And that'll be going in at the start. Because I've never been to the fishery before, I've approximately got just under a kilo of ground bait left over now. So I don't know what we're going to top up with. It might be a case of they're not too keen on the ground bait, so try and fish that out and then lose feed over the top. Or if they are coming fast on the ground bait and they're spewing it up, for instance, I can feed little nuggets of ground bait. Or there is another option. Ground bait kills the joker. So if there's predominantly roach in here, I want to cut the ground bait out and just top up with soil. So soil, we can add as much joker to this as we want and we can feed it in small balls. How the session goes on is how, what dictates how I'm going to feed. I'm hoping that the fish like the ground bait and we can just top up with small balls of ground bait laced with joker, maggots and casters. Let's get some fishing done. All we're going to do now is make the, the balls up ready for feeding. Sometimes um, in ideal conditions or if you're going to try and catch a lot of fish or you know the fish are in it responds to boiling it in you can boil it in however we would have done our mix separate uh, a bit different to how we would do it today so we would have before we introduced our, our feed into our mix we would have done as many balls as you want to boil in and then we would introduce the feed into the ground bait which is going to be then cooked over the top because it, if you put for instance a lot of joker in the mix and a ball goes stray you don't want them fish coming off your feed and following that ball what's gone stray. However, today, all we're going to do is cup every ball in so we've, we're safe to introduce all of our feed into the initial feed. There's a lot you can do with ground bait. So you can squeeze the balls hard and try and get them to break down at different intervals or you can squeeze them light and try and get them to break down straight away or you can vary it and do for instance three soft and three hard that way the fish can't get to your bait all at one time and uh, it'll break down in your peg gradually. What we're going to do today, I've done four balls quite hard. Now what we're going to do is do a couple nice and soft. So one or, one or two squeezes. There we go. 
So what we've got now, we've got our six balls ready to introduce. As you can see, the laden with Joker, with the odd maggot and the odd caster. That's what we want. We don't want the fish switching on to maggots and casters too soon. We want to catch on bloodworm, get them confident, and that way we can clatter them. Right, all I'm going to take you through now is my rigs. I've set uh, three rigs up today. I wanted to set, um, have more lines, really, but I've, I've opted for one line at 30 metres due to the weed on the inside. I can't put a short line in, so I've just set three rigs up to do three different things at the same, uh, on the same line. So the first rig I'm going to take you through today is a Commercial Indications RR1 in a 0.5. So we start at the bottom of the rig, we've got a PR434, it's a nice slim hook uh, with a low gauge on it, and that's in an 18, to a Commercial Indications Pro 010 6 inch hook length. Moving up, we've got a number 9 dropper, a number 9 dropper, and We've got a bulk of number H just there. Coming up to the top of the rig, we've got a prototype three to five hollow elastic. And then that's my first rig. Ideally, I'd like to catch on this rig um, as it just seemed the best in the water at the time. Moving on, for if things are really good, We've got a Commercial Indications Prototype RR2 and this is in a 0.8. If the fishing's really good, then we'll swap over to the, this rig as it's heavier and it'll get our bait down quicker and it'll be more positive, a more positive rig. So we've got, this time we've got a 16 PR434 on an 010 Commercial Indications Pro length again. A number nine dropper, a number nine dropper, a bulk of number eight, and then we've got a, uh, a double four elastic. It's nice and soft on the strike, but when we do strike and ship back, it'll beef up. Next, we've got a commercial indications RR4 which is a Chianti type float. It's got a carbon stem, uh, carbon stem, a cane bristle, 1.2, and it's a lovely float. This is used for casters and maggots through the water. At the bottom, we've got a, an 18's PR434 to uh, an 08 hook length. And then, as you can see there, we've just got a strong bulk of um, number 10's. Main line on all the rigs is 014 uh, Commercial Indications Pro. On this, we've just got that number three, uh, three to five uh, prototype hollow elastic again. All we're gonna do now is introduce our six balls onto that 13 metre pole line. Ensuring you line up with that far, far bank marker. All I'm doing is making sure my hand is in the same place every time and I've got a dolly butt in the back which enables me to put my pole into my uh, bump bar and I can fast, uh, fish past my feed if I want to. Right, that's all six balls introduced into the peg now. One point I must stress is in when you've got gusting winds, when you do ship out, are you ready to drop your ball? Don't drop that ball 
until that wind's died down or you know you're bang on above that, that marker where you want to be. Because if, for instance, you just try and drop on winning illy and one goes off, that could ruin your peg for a couple of hours maybe. And um, just make sure that the, the bottom is quite uh, flat. If it's on a gradual slope like that, maybe come back or make your balls into a square or uneven. So when they do hit the bottom, you know that they're going to stay where they are. So it's so important to make sure that you know where your feed is in that peg. Right then, let's try and catch some fish. We're going to start off on the RR1. It's a nice happy medium at dead depth on a blood, uh, double blood worm. What I want to try and work out is uh, what kind of fish are in my peg and how big they are. For instance, if I go out and I catch a skimmer of maybe eight ounce, I'll go straight over depth to try and target them skimmers. If I go in and I catch a roach at around four ounce, I'll come off the bottom because that's the most effective way of catching roach. The wind's blowing my, um, my float past my tip. So my, my bait is sitting just beyond my feed. I'm not too worried about this because I've just had a bite straight away. However, what I can do is put a positive back shot onto the line and that'll pull my, uh, my rig back over my feed. But we'll see how it goes first. That's our first fish, which has got caught on the weed there. Hey! <laughs> Place them approximately 12 to 18 inch away from the Dacron connector and about 20 inch away from the float. All this will do, these number eight shots will drop down in the water, sink in this piece of line and bring in my float closer to my tip. I'm going to take two bloodworms again. What we're looking to do is hook them through the black end, which is the head. There's one. And there's two. Two bites straight away, so I'll carry on fishing the peg out and see what else we can catch. All we're doing is trying to line the float up above that bait and then just lower it on top. The float is sat directly below my pole tip and that's due to them back shots. All I'm going to do now is, um, because the conditions have just got worse and worse, I'm just going to step up now to the bigger float, the RR2, which has got a, a hollow bristle, so it'll sit better in the, in the surface, and uh, it's got more weight in it, so hopefully I can control it a bit better. Put them three number eight back shot on again, because they just work well with that smaller float. Bigger hook on this rig, it's got a 16 on, we'll try a double maggot. This time I've put one live maggot on and one dead maggot on and I'm having to wait for the bite now. When I've put dead maggots on, the float seems to go under a lot quicker than this time when I've put a live maggot on. Perchy, perchy, perchy. Right, so now we've had that perch, that tells me that uh, we could catch on caster. And you can catch some really big perch on casters. So in that top up mix, we'll definitely put more casters now. Right, we've had uh, an interesting morning. We've caught some uh, skimmers and a few perch and some roach. We've got a load of pond weed out to 13 metres, it's just been a nightmare, absolute nightmare. With that in mind, the amount of weed, I'm thinking that the fish have been feeding through, through the water. So we're just going to start firing some casters out now, the wind's dropped down to about 30 miles an hour instead of 50. So we're, uh, 
We'll see where we go. We'll drop a caster on. We'll see what happens. I think we'll call that little beauty the last fish. Thanks for watching. It's been a really, really hard day. I think the winds have been up to like 45 miles an hour. It's just made everything really, really difficult. Um, best rigger today was by far that, this prototype RR2 in a point eight. Um, I think if the conditions was a bit better, the lighter rigs would have been much, much better. We've been fishing double blood worm with a, uh, a maggot top, uh, topping the double blood worm. And um, we've fished at 13 metres. We haven't fished the feeder because we've got loads of pond weed and we can't get the feeder back through it. But yeah, that's fishing I suppose. We've had a nice day. I'd just like to thank Commercial Indications, SSB Law, uh, which are the site sponsors and you at home for watching. Thank you.